We are ready now to focus in on the thumbnail grid. And so what I'm going to do is temporarily disable the gallery description because it's a rather large page element and kind of uh, becomes distracting, for me at least, when I'm trying to look at the thumbnail images. Traditionally, the controls for the thumbnail image size and number of columns have been located here in the output settings pane, and they're still here. Uh, but I've also duplicated those controls in the color palette here in the grid appearance control group because it just seems to be a more relevant place for them to be. So the first sliders we have are for the thumbnail width and height, which affect the actual size of these thumbnail images. Uh, and then we have a slider for the number of columns that we can use to increase or decrease the columns on our page. Uh, before I start changing a lot of things though, I'm going to turn on this checkbox for display grid measurement. And that puts a little box up here in the upper left hand corner of our preview with a number in it. And that number measures the width of our thumbnail grid. So from about here to over here on the right hand side. Now this only appears in the web preview in Lightroom. So if I were to leave this turned on and export my gallery, uh, that box would not appear in my exported gallery. It's, it's simply a tool that exists only here in Lightroom uh, to help us while we're designing our pages. As a rule of thumb, web designers for several years have used 960 as a, a, a rule for content width on a page. And that number is based on the statistic that most internet users uh, have traditionally had displays that were 1,024 pixels wide. Uh, so the number 960 was used to ensure that the page content would, for most users, fit within the browser window. Now newer displays are pushing higher resolution numbers and so it's probably safe in most cases to have larger thumbnails or a greater number of columns uh, you know, in, increasing the width of the content overall. You can see that when I go to six columns uh, that takes me up to 1152. But because I'm a traditionalist with web design, for this demonstration I'm going to stick to a five column layout and we're going to target 960 pixels for our total width. So uh, getting into the sliders, we can affect the size of all of the elements of each of these squares. Uh, beginning on the very outside and working our way in, the outermost border is tied to the frame border slider. You, as you can see, we can increase the size of that. The next layer in is the frame padding, which also can be increased or decreased according to uh, taste. The next layer in is this border that goes around the thumbnail and uh, that can be increased to a maximum of 10. And then between that border and the thumbnail, there's an additional layer of padding which can also be adjusted. So those are getting very large and very ugly. Uh, we'll fix that momentarily. Um, there's a slider here for rounding the frame corners which again depends on CSS and will not display in browsers that do not support CSS corner rounding. And then there's a slider here for grid spacing which adjusts the amount of space between the thumbnails. Uh, so you can take it down to zero if you want a very tight grid or if you want to bring in more space you can take that to a wider number. It's important though that for grid spacing you keep this uh, set to an even number. Because of the way the gallery does its math, uh, even numbers will cause things to align correctly, where odd numbers will uh, cause some misalignments between certain page elements. And uh, there's a reminder here, just below that slider, it says grid spacing should always be an even number. So just a good rule of thumb to work with. So let's start uh, aiming for a good design here and stop playing around. So I'm going to take the thumbnail padding down to, uh, we'll say four pixels for now. I'm going to decrease the thumbnail border to a single pixel. I'm going to take the frame padding back down to 20, which is the default value. 
and then I'm also going to decrease the frame border. Uh, well, we'll leave it at one for now. And I'm going to take the grid spacing up to, well, kind of like in 14. We have, of course, color controls. So we can start dialing in some colors. Uh, I am going to use that same green that we have up in the menu bar for my frames. And then for the inner padding, I've been looking for a place to use this shade of blue. And I think this is going to be the place for that. And then I'm going to leave my uh, borders, both inner and outer, narrow and black. So now uh, you can see that the grid width has come down to 910, which means I've got uh, some pixels to work with. I'm going to try increasing the size of my thumbnails. So 960 minus 910 gives me 50 pixels. I've got five thumbnails in each row. So uh, I can increase the size of these by about 10 pixels each. So I'm going to take these up to 146. And then you may find that when you increase or when you change the size of the images, you need to manually reload the page for those changes to take effect. So on a Mac, you would hit Command R. On a Windows, you'd hit Control R. And that will cause Lightroom to re-render those images. So uh, my calculations were correct. The grid width is back up to 960. And I like what I see. So uh, the grid width measurement tool, again, it won't appear in your exported galleries. So you can leave it there if you want. But I think for now, we're done with it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And if you haven't been doing it all along as we've been working, this is probably a good time to venture over into the template browser, do a secondary click on that template we've been working with, and update with current settings. That way, if we want to return to this state, we can do so simply by accessing the preset here in the template browser.